Hey there, Sound of Peeps, how's it going? Henry here. Today we're going to go over the scrotum or testicular Doppler ultrasound protocol. It's going to be a very brief video. It's a pretty easy exam. Think about renal Dopplers of how we scan the polar regions, the sagittal, medial, and lateral. So let's get right to it. To begin, we're going to go transverse with what I call, or what I'll probably a lot of people call, the twins view. So that's both testicles in the same image, transverse. That's a good way to look at both testicles, make sure they're both the same in echo texture and echogenicity. Make sure there's no fluid around one of them or the other. Make sure that they're, they're both lying transverse in the scrotum. After you've taken that image, you want to throw a color Doppler. This is a good way to rule out right off the bat of the testicular torsion. Here you can see in both images, there's equal amount of flow to both testicles. There is pretty symmetric. There's not hyperemia in one or the other, which would potentially indicate orchitis or some other inflammatory uh, process. There's no test, no testicles lacking color flow, so that's also good. You don't want to make sure there's no testicular torsion. That's pretty much the number one reason to do a testicular ultrasound, at least in the ER. Here in this next example, you can see we have a transverse view of the scrotum. You can see one testicle is color flow, and the other testicle is turned sideways. You can see it's longitudinal, and that testicle is transverse. That one has flow, that one has doesn't. So that's a, a case of testicular torsion. All right, so once you're done with the transverse views or the twins views, you want to go sagittal. So we're on the right first, sagittal right midline. Here you see the sagittal testicle, the superior pole, the midsection, and the inferior pole. And in the superior pole, you can see the epididymis or the epididymal head. There you see a testicular echo texture is homogeneous. There's no microlithiasis. There's no tumors, at least in this view. There's no hydrocele or fluid around the testicles. So once you're done with the sagittal midline, you want to go lateral. All right, so your lateral there, you can still see a bit of the head of the, of the epididymis. And then once you're done with lateral, you want to go medial. In medial, you can see the mediastinum testis, which is this echogenic band right there at the hilum of the testicle. All right, also look for fluid, any testicular um, lesions or cysts. All right, so once you're done with those images, you want to take a color Doppler image. Here, sagittal, you're putting your color Doppler box over the entire testicle. You see there's good flow. And the older the patient is, the better you're going to be able to detect flow. In pediatrics, the younger the patient is, the less flow you're going to get. Sometimes it's really hard, especially the, if, the inf if it's an infant or it's a baby and they're crying and screaming. It can be quite difficult. But here, this is an older patient. Still young, but you can see there's good flow. Now, with those younger babies and younger pediatric patients that cry and scream, you're going to have a harder time. You want to reduce the scale or bring your scale down and bring your wall filter up to, to reduce, to reduce um, you know, artifacts. But if there's testicular torsion, you're going to see it. As long as there's good flow within the testicle, you're, you're good. So once you take that color Doppler image, you're going to put spectral Doppler. Now, as long as there's good color flow throughout the entire testicle, you can take one spectral Doppler image. Some places might require uh, several spectral Dopplers. We do superior, midsection, and inferior poles. All right? So once you're done with the Dopplers, you want to measure. Here you got your sagittal and transverse images. You measure from superior to inferior, anterior to posterior, and your transverse width. There you see this test testicle measure here, 4.1 by 1.6 by 2.1 with a volume of 7.2. I'll put in the finished video a diagram explaining the normal testicular measurements by age and whatnot. So you're done with the measurement. Now you want to move on to the epididymis. So you take your picture of the epididymis. The most prominent part of the epididymis is going to be the head. So you want to take that at the superior pole of the testicle. You can see the entire epididymis, but the head is more bulbous, and then the body and tail of the epididymis get very thin. But you can still track it down. Obviously, you want to make sure there's no epididymitis or inflammation of the epididymis. In that case, it's going to be larger. The entire You might see the entire gland a lot larger. You want to put colored Doppler to see there's no hyperemia. And move on from there. You'll, there'll also be some inflammatory changes of the tissues around the epididymis, the fat within the scrotum, and all that. All right, so you put some colored Doppler. Also, a lot of a very common finding you'll see in the epididymis is epididymal cysts. No big deal. A lot of a lot of males have them. Uh, some cases you might have a spermatocele. So look out for those. So once you're done with your sagittal images, you want to go to transverse, beginning at the superior pole of the testicle with a, the epididymis. 
Abi did a mohead, and you want to move down from there. So Abi did a mohead, and then your next image is going to be superior pole of the testicle, then the midsection, and then the inferior pole of the testicle. Once you're done with your testicular images, then you want to go into the inguinal canal. In the inguinal canal, you're going to look for the spermatic cord. You're going to make sure there's no inflammatory changes to the spermatic cord, like funiculitis or vasitis. You want to put color Doppler there. So your next image is color, color Doppler. You can see the spermatic cord vessels, the arteries, and then the smaller veins of the pampiniform plexus. There, you also want to check for varicose seal. Now, you can have a varicose seal within the spermatic cord, or you can have a, a varicose seal that tracks all the way down into the hemiscrotum. In those cases, you still want to put color Doppler. You will see a lot of tubes within the spermatic cord, inguinal region, or the hemiscrotum. Anechoic tubes long, in longitudinal and little circular ones in transverse. So you want to take that image. You want to also put color Doppler, and then you want to have the patient do a Valsalva maneuver to increase that blood flow to the varicose seal. So have them take a deep breath. Hold it and bear down or push down like if they're like if they're defecating or if they're like if they're gonna pop their ears and that should make the blood flow increase. Obviously, if you have a baby that can't follow commands, you can kind of press on their abdomen a little bit and that will increase the intra-abdominal pressure. Also, they're probably already upset and they're gonna start crying, and just crying itself will increase the Vasava maneuver. Okay, and I know that what you can have is to have People cough, but you know, in these COVID days, you don't want to ask nobody to cough in your face. All right, so that's pretty much it. This is just a protocol video. I'm not really going over much pathology. I'll show a couple images of pathologies like varicose seals, hydro seals, and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is a quick one. As always, click the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me how you do your protocols in your place, any suggestions for future videos, and that's pretty much it. All right, take care.